Coming up today on That LTD Life, there's a new lifetime deal that is a CRM, a project management tool. It can check your emails. You can respond to people on Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. It can do so much, it makes my head spin. It probably makes your head spin as well just hearing about it. But don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you, help you understand it. And hopefully this one kind of knocks it out of the park. And fingers crossed, we've had a kind of a run of mediocre deals lately. So. Let's go ahead and dive into Amwork, a new lifetime deal over at AppSumo. So here's the Amwork sales page. You can see that it starts off at 59 bucks and let's check out the plans and pricing. I'm gonna point out that you get all of the features with each tier. You're just choosing how much storage you need and how many users you want to use on the platform. So you wanna have a lot of storage, but just a few users, you're still gonna to need to choose a higher tier. If you wanna choose a lot of users, but you don't need much storage, well, again, same thing. It's kind of all bundled together. So 50 users at 250 gigabytes total storage is the max plan. That's gonna cost you 549 bucks. But hey, have you checked out the price of CRMs lately? That's like a month worth of fees if you have a team of 10. All right, so here's my Amwork account. Now, lately in these videos, I've been just signing up and going through the entire process on camera and letting you see everything that confuses me. But with Amwork, it seemed like a complex enough tool that I wanted to keep the runtime of this video a little bit more concise. So I went ahead and I checked it out beforehand. And I gotta say that it's a really nice application. It's thought out very well. There are some things that I think I'd like to see them address. But before we do that, let's take kind of a broad overview of what it can do. And it's like I mentioned before, quite a lot. This is what they call the workspace builder. And you get to this screen by just clicking on this icon up here. You can see there's a tooltip. it says builder. Now the builder is where it's like a Lego land where you can build software for your business. It's, it, you know, there's, there's some walls. It's not like Notion where you can do anything. There's some walls, there's some restrictions, but I think they're helpful restrictions. They, they add tools, they add options depending on the use case that you want. And you can see there's a lot of them here. We've got everything from CRMs to organizing your contractors, doing appointment scheduling, managing leases. So if you have a property management company, you might want to use this software for that. We've got a generic kind of context section here or a context module. We've got a hiring module, companies. So if you have uh, contacts that are part of companies, you can actually link these together and they're gonna build some more as well. Now I'm gonna go deeper into the builder momentarily, but first let's look at some demo data so you can get a feel for how this application actually works. So over here on the left-hand sidebar, it kind of looks like any other CRM you might have ever used before. There's a list of icons and then you click on one of them and you get like a Kanban board or a different view, something like that. So here I am in one called tasks and activities. This is called a module again. So I'm in the tasks and activities module and inside of that, I've got a bunch of boards. So right now I'm looking at the time board for estimating your time tracking. I've also got an activities board if I need to see what needs to get done. It's funny, I just saw a spinning wheel there. One of the things that has been most notable about Amwork is it's extremely snappy. That's the first time it's ever slowed down for me at all. Of course, it would happen on camera. All right, so let's jump to another one. Let's check out the tasks board. You wanna make a simple to-do list for yourself or for your work. Uh, you can definitely do that with Amwork. Here's the board. We can view it in a list mode, in a calendar mode, and a Gantt mode. All the same data, just different views, very similar to something like Notion. So this is the tasks and settings module. Let's check out a few other modules before we try to build our own. The next one down here is a sales pipeline, a CRM, so to speak. And here we can see our qualified leads, contacts that have been made, the different columns inside of this Kanban board. We again can view it just like the task list in different views here. But this time we've got a report where we can actually see what deals are getting done, what groups are responsible for those deals, what ratings they have received, so on and so forth. Actually a pretty full featured reporting system here. There's also a dashboard view where I can see at a glance how the sales pipeline is looking. And there's even automations for your boards. So when I'm in board view here, I can go over to settings and go to board settings. And now I can set up automations. So there's four different types of automations for boards. There's tasks, activities, changing stages, and emails. So let's say once someone has made contact, I want to send them an email. I can create the email right here, maybe give it a delay. And then once it moves into that stage, I can have it fire off a pre-filled email. The trigger options, in case you're curious, are 
when transitioning or creating. So if you've created a contact in that stage, it will automatically fire off the email. Or if you move it over, we've got some other options here at the transition to the stage, at the creation stage, or when the responsible user changes. We could also do it at a precise time if you'd like. You can schedule out an email automation to be sent. I see that being a little bit less useful for the use cases I can think of. Now, I'm not gonna bore you by going through every single automation option because there are a lot of them, but let's take a look at one more, the task automations. So essentially, this means something's going to happen to the task itself when it reaches a certain trigger. So for example, let's say I wanna to go to invoice sent and when a task reaches invoice sent, maybe not creation, but just transitions to that stage and someone is responsible, maybe Olivia, we can create another task that's due at the end of the day for Olivia. And that task might be to reach out to the client and ask if they have any questions about the invoice or, or something along those lines. So I'll title this reach out to client and hit save. So now under invoice sent, you can see I've got one automation. I can always open it up and then edit it further if I need to make changes in the future. I don't wanna undersell how powerful these automations are. It's pretty difficult to find these types of automations inside of a project management or a CRM system without having to pay additional fees. Typically they will meter you nickel and dime you for these simple automations. You know it doesn't cost them much in terms of CPU power, but they charge you and people pay it so they continue to charge you. Really nice to see it here available in Amwork Unlimited, amazing. Now I mentioned emails a moment ago because you can actually send and receive emails inside of Amwork. In fact, there's a module down here for email. In fact, I could connect up my inbox. How do you do that? Well, you go over to the settings, go to email settings, and then right over here, we can connect up our mailbox. Now it works with Google via their API, or you can connect up to any SMTP mailbox, which I was really happy to see. I'm not gonna connect my account up fully here because it would start to download all of my emails, but this is what the screen looks like here. You set your username, your password, enter in the IMAP server, the SMTP server, and then you can set up the owner of the mail. You know, usually that would be assigned to one particular user, but you can also make this inbox available to all users as well. So if I wanted to select all here, maybe I was connecting up like sales at clientamp.com, well, then all users could then go ahead and check that inbox, it'd be a shared inbox. You could even use this as a support desk. So here I am in the projects module over here where you can track your projects. So I've got just two columns in this Kanban, to do and in progress. If I open up one of these cards, we're gonna see some information available to me here. So I've got the information about the card, the details, maybe I've got like an estimate. Um, I can add this to a particular deal. So that's gonna tie into our sales pipeline over here. Then I can add in a supplier or a contractor to complete the work. And both of these fields are connected to other modules as well because we have our suppliers and contractors right over here in separate modules. So all of the data is connected, but also separated enough that you can easily make sense of it. Now I've been focused on this first column right here, but there's a second column where we can add additional information. So let's say I need to add a note about this contact or schedule an activity. I can do that and it's gonna show up over on my activities. So let's say I need to email this person. I'll say a quick check-in and it's assigned to me. I'm going to schedule it for, oh, how about tomorrow? And I'll go ahead and hit save. Now, if I go back over to my tasks and activities, oops, I've not saved it. Let me go ahead and save. All right, now I'm inside of my activities and you can see over here, August 1st, I have a quick check-in. That's amazing. Like I've seen a lot of tools promising to allow you to manage your entire business but this is maybe the closest I've seen inside of one system. All right, I just wanna show you a few more things before we dive into actually building our own module. First, let's talk about messaging because that's obviously essential, both with your customers as well as with your coworkers, with your team. So there's a few options here to check out. First of all, I've got this little icon up here, which is the Amwork Messenger. If I click on this, it pops open the messenger here. Now this is a multi-messenger, meaning that we can connect up other sources as well, but there's internal chats available as well. So that's where your coworkers will live. You can go ahead and just start chatting with them right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a user so you can see what the chat looks like. You'll also get to see all of the options available when you add a new user. So let's go to settings and then configuring users. Then up here at the top, I can add an additional user. I'll do that. I'll call this person Joe Smith. 
I'll give Joe a password, give him a permission. I'll call him a designer and I'll put him in a user group called design. Now we can set up user groups. I'll show you that in a moment, but it's essentially a way to organize everybody into teams. Now I could make Joe an administrator, which would just give him access to everything, but chances are you've got people that should have access to say like the tasks, but maybe not to hiring. So I'll leave administrator off and I'm gonna close out my messenger for a moment here so we can see everything. I've got very, very granular permission settings for each of my modules. So let's say I want to block off hiring all together for Joe, I can go ahead and turn off denied view edits. Everything here is off. He can no longer see hiring at all. Okay. So let's save Joe here. I can do save and add. And now if I go back out to my users, I have an additional user in the design group. Now, before I do the chat, I'm going to get to that. I just want to show you groups. Very, very simple here. I can add groups. So a group for each team, maybe we have marketing and development, and then I can add subgroups as well. So here's a couple groups, senior design and junior design. They're both subgroups of design. Then when I configure my users, I'll open up Olivia here and I can assign them to a group. Maybe Olivia's in marketing and Emily is a senior designer. The only downside I see here is that a user can only belong to one group at a time. So if I wanted to be in design and marketing, I have to choose one or the other. All right, so back to our messenger here. Once again, that's just a little chat bubble up here. I'm gonna hit the pencil icon to start a new chat. Now I can choose who I wanna chat with, multiple users, everybody, just a single user. For now, I'm gonna message Joe. All right, here's my message for Joe. I can go ahead and attach an emoji, upload an image, and then send the chat. So overall, this is a pretty good experience. However, I accidentally sent the heart eyes over to Joe and I'd like to edit that before he sees it, but there's no way to edit the chats. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I'd love to see a little triple dot here that I can click on and then maybe unsend or remove my embarrassing emoji. I've definitely sent things inadvertently in the past when you just happen to click on the wrong one right at the last minute and you don't notice it. Although thankfully there is a return key necessary here, probably less likely, but edits are still a thing. People need to edit. So that would be a feature I'd love to see. Now, what about connecting up third-party chat platforms? Cause you can definitely do that. So over in settings under integrations, we've got WhatsApp, Although this seems to be somewhat duplicated by WhatsApp, which is a platform that you have to pay for separately that lets you integrate WhatsApp and Telegram. Now, as an American, I'm not very qualified to talk about WhatsApp, but I'm trying to distinguish the difference between the direct integration here and WhatsApp, which is actually fairly pricey. Here's the WhatsApp website. Going down the pricing here, it's gonna cost you at least $16 per month per channel. So it's kind of a lot if you wanna connect multiple accounts up. Now this does let you connect up both WhatsApp and Telegram, but if you can get away with it, it seems like the better deal is to use this option here for WhatsApp business through Amwork. It says you need to have a verified Twilio WhatsApp business account in order for this to work. So I'm not sure how difficult that is to get. Maybe someone in the comments can help me out here. We can connect up Facebook Messenger though. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna go ahead and install it. I'll choose my page, give it permission. And it says here that Dave Swift has been connected to Amwork. All right, got it. When I went back to Amwork, I got a 404 page, not a good look. These Facebook integrations can be tricky. So I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt here, but let's see if I can get back to the homepage. None of these buttons are working. All right, so I just manually went back to the homepage here. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna open up my chat here. And sure enough, I've got the Dave Swift channel over here. This is gonna be on Facebook. Here I am on Facebook. I'm going to message myself. This is a test. And unfortunately nothing has come through. So, so I was trying on Safari. I got that 404 error. I'm going to switch over to arc here, which is Chrome based and let's try it out again. I've removed that previous integration and I'm starting from scratch. So I hit install back over into Facebook Let me grant permission. It's been connected and I get the 404 again. So I think this integration is not currently working. It seems completely broken to me. Um, if I click the go back home button, it works here inside of Chrome. It did not inside of Safari. So there's a few more settings. I just want to show you inside of the integration. So under integrations, and then you can see here, I've got this one connected here, hit manage. It says it's in draft mode. So if I want to publish it, I can click on this pencil icon I can give it a name. Like I'd call it DSFB, choose which user is going to be responsible for new leads. Maybe I assign it to myself. Then I can choose which users have access to the chats. Maybe I want to make everyone accessible or you can choose whatever you like here. And then the important switch is right here to turn on the account. So I'm going to do that, hit save. 
And you can see now it says active. And if I go up to my little messenger here, you can see it shows up DSFB as uh, the account, but there are no chats here. So let's go ahead and try a new chat. Here's my accounts. I'm going to send a message. Ah, and this time it did work. This exact same setup did not work in Safari. I can see the user over here inside of Amwork, although it says unknown user, which is very interesting. That's not super helpful. I definitely would want to know the name of the person messaging me. Now I can update the name manually here. There's a pencil. I could say, you know, Dave test or whatever, but I definitely would want that filled out automatically. And then I can create a card up here. So that is going to create a new contact or a new lead. So maybe this is a customer contact and it's a deal put under leads and hit create. Now it didn't even use my test name here. It just says unknown user. I'd have to fill this all out manually. So hypothetically, I can engage with the lead via messenger and then fill out the important details. So overall, kind of a half-baked integration with Facebook. They've got some good ideas though. So assuming they can fix whatever's going on with the API of Facebook, I do notice that I can click right here on the user contact and then open up the chat directly. That's pretty nice. All right, there are a ton more features. We need to get into the module builder here, but you can see the other integrations available. Salesforce, you can connect up. There's telephony and PBX integrations. So there's a little phone icon down here. You can actually set this up to act as a real phone to send out text messages as well as do voice calls. All of that is going to happen inside of your settings and it's going to connect up to another service called, I've never heard of this before, but it's Voxim Plant. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but you can go over to their site, set up your account here. There's additional fees, obviously, for this. We can see all of the actual rates right down here. They're very transparent about the pricing. That is you know, very important, obviously. So if we look at the rates for, in the United States of America for inbound calls, you're going to be paying about a half a penny per minute for a geographic phone number. So like, you know, your local area code. If you want to get a special phone number, so maybe you choose the actual digits, it's gonna go up to a nickel. And if you want a 1-800 or a toll-free number, not necessarily 1-800, I suppose, it's going to be three cents a minute. Now for making outbound calls from the United States, it's definitely a little bit more expensive. So USA Other would be anything inside of the continental 48 states. It's gonna be about a penny per minute. SMS messages are also about a penny each. And then you're probably gonna to wanna to get a phone number and that's gonna cost you anywhere from one to $3 per month. I'm not gonna go any further into the phone setup in this video, but if you need to see more, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll consider seeing if I can produce some more content about it. Onward, the grand finale of this video is their builder. Uh, there's actually not a ton to do here, but I do wanna show you exactly how it works. So you start off by choosing the functionality that you want. Let's go ahead and choose I don't know, how about lease management? We've not touched on anything related to that yet, so we'll see some different options here. I'm gonna go under lease management and choose create new module. The first step is to give the module a name. I'll call it my rental portfolio, and then I can choose an icon for the left-hand sidebar. There's a few to choose from here, not a great deal, honestly, but there's a few. I'll choose this one here that looks like an apartment complex and go to the next option. So you can see here we're on step one, which is to basically give it a name. Then in step two, we're gonna create product categories, maybe like available and leased. In the next step, we set up our warehouses and barcodes for our products. So if we've got something we need to keep track of inventory for, we could do that. We can also add barcodes to track the itemization of each individual item. For now, I'm gonna skip that step. In step four, we set up the schedule settings. So here we've got an option for rental duration as well as the start time of the rental. By default, it's set to go to 24 hours and start off at 9 a.m. Skipping to the next step, we've got the ways to link up this data to other modules. So perhaps I want to link this up to my customers while well, I could create a module for customers like customer contacts, and then I could tie a rental to that contact. All right, we'll save this. And now over in the left-hand sidebar, I've got my rental portfolio. Well, what I wanna do here is add a product. I can upload an image, set up the price, and there we go. I've got my dream home listed here. And now maybe I have a lead who's interested in renting a home for a day. Well, I could go into my portfolio over here, choose the category. I only wanna see available properties, and I can click into it. Here is all of the details, the photo of the home, I've got a description over here. I can add additional prices if I like. Maybe I want to allow someone to rent it for a week or a month. 
column over here to set the maximum discount. So if your salespeople need to know how far they can go to close the deal, you can give them that info right inside of the portfolio. All right, let's try the builder one more time, this time being a little bit more conventional. Let's look at the options for creating our very own CRM. So I'm gonna click CRM and then choose create new module and I can give the module a name. Again, choosing an icon. I can toggle on and off different types of displays. So maybe I don't ever want to see the list view for my sales CRM, that might be the case. I'm gonna turn that off and now I'm only going to see the board view. I'll call this the website redesign pipeline. So these are leads for people who need a new website. I can add some fields in here, like a client name, their URL, which would be obviously a link and their phone number. And finally, email address. Then on the next step, I can choose what functionality I would like each card to have. Is it going to have activities attached to it? Is it going to have tasks attached to it? If it has tasks, I can specify which board I need to track. Do I want to add notes? Should I have chats? Can I upload files? Do I need to create documents? There's an entire templating system for creating documents. And then once again, I can link up this module to another module that I already have, like maybe my customer companies as well as my customers. We see the portfolio show up down here under products because it is not a card-based module, it's a product-based module. There's also scheduling-based modules. When I'm all done, I'll hit save. And then right over here is my brand new CRM, complete with dashboard and reports, no setup necessary. You add your deals up here in the upper right-hand corner, give the deal a name, attach it to a contact, leave some notes, and you're off to the races. Of course, just like before, we can set up automations for this board. We can add in new columns if we want. So here are the existing columns. I can trash them. And at any point, add in a new column in between. I'm gonna add as many columns as I like. So now you've seen a considerable amount of Amwork. As you can tell, it's actually a fairly simple application, but there are a few quirks. It's not perfect by far. I'd love to be able to have a calendar sharing link that I could then just add into my regular calendar application, whether that's Google or Apple or whatever tool you're using for your calendar. But as it is, you'll have to actually log into Amwork and check the calendar over there. Definitely a huge downside, especially when you consider the fact that there's no iOS or no Android app for Amwork currently, at least as far as I can tell. It's another huge downside if you're relying on this for chat because often people need to answer chats on the go and then mobile phone is going to be the way. Might work on a web app type of basis, but you just need dedicated apps these days. I'd also love to see maybe a guest mode for sharing access to projects. Let's say you wanna work with a client and invite them into the portal. Well, you'd have to use one of your actual users. Now, that's not a huge deal. You just buy a plan with enough users, but having a guest or view only mode is something you see in a lot of CRMs or a lot of other project management tools. And I'd like to see that as an option here as well. There's also no custom domain name, which is kind of a big thing for AppSumo people. They like to have a custom domain name. They will give you a subdomain of the Amwork domain, but that's not really the same thing. And everybody knows that. So it'd be nice if we could do like, you know, projects.yourdomain.com, but that doesn't seem like it's on the pipeline, judging by the reactions over on the AppSumo questions and answers section. There's also just a few weird things that just don't click with me. Like I said, the platform's fairly easy once you realize there's just modules and then modules are organized into different types. You know, it might be smart of them to make it clear what type of module you're adding, whether it's a, a, a card or a Kanban based module, or if it's a scheduling module or a product module. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any real uh, like color coding here. They're just kind of random icons. But another thing that was weird to me was Let's say I go to the tasks and activities, which is very clearly to me, at least a board based module, um, but I can't change the board settings for this, which means I can't add automations to tasks and activities. It's just not possible. I only get board and calendar. Whereas in the CRM, I have board list, dashboard and reports, but no calendar. There's also just some usability issues that need to be solved. Like for example, let's say you add a module and you decide, no, that's not right for me. I don't wanna use that module. I wanna delete it from my account altogether. It's a little hard to find how to actually do that. The instinctive motion you'd probably make is, well, let's go over to settings and there's probably a listing of modules and I can just delete them. Not there. You actually have to click up here on the builder and then there's a tab for your workspace. And here you can see a list of all of the existing modules. You can go to that module you can edit that module, which is the builder screen, or right next to it is the delete option. So this took me a little while to find. I wanted to point it out in the video in case it's helpful to anyone else. Uh, definitely should be a lot more just 
easily discoverable. All right, so I've reviewed quite a few kind of mediocre at best tools in a row. This was a breath of fresh air. It's a very nice tool. Like I've just mentioned, there's a host of things I'd love to see improve, but for a lifetime deal, a brand new tool, well, I guess it's not brand new. They've been around for a little while, but obviously they're still building steam. That's why they're on AppSumo. Uh, I think it's in a pretty good place right now. So there's the broken integration with Facebook that definitely needs to be fixed and will hurt them in the scoring a little bit. But overall, it was a snappy, very easy to use application. Pretty impressed with it. I'm gonna give Amwork a 7.4. If you wanna pick up your own copy of Amwork, there is a link down below. You can also get anything at AppSumo, by the way, that helps support the channel so I can continue to make these daily videos. I think we made about 20 videos in July. So huge thank you to my editor, my designer, my team that helps put these together. We've got an entire website that lists every video we put out with a full AI transcription. You can also sign up for my free email newsletter or check out our premium online courses. That is clientamp.com. Definitely go check that out as well. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.